Hi, and welcome to Run Tall with Tim. I'm Tim. Today I'm comparing two stability shoes by Hoka, both new for 2021, the Arahi 5 and the Gaviota 3. Hey guys, so thanks for tuning in. Before I get into it too far, I always like to demonstrate what it looks like to run in the shoes I'm about to review for you. So let's do that. But then when we come back together, I'm gonna to take a real close look at the Arahi 5 and the Gaviota 3 to try to answer the question, which shoe is right for you? Now this video is not intended to be a full review of either shoe, but if you want to check those out, I'll put a card above that you can click on and it'll take you right there. Also, if you're new to the channel, I post running shoe reviews and comparisons on both Wednesday and Saturday mornings, and that's at 5 a.m. Standard Eastern Time here in the U.S. I also like to post other videos related to running, but I'm never sure what day of the week that's going to be or even what time. So if you enjoy watching running shoe reviews and other videos related to running, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time that I upload new content. So let's start with the cost and the weight of each. So with the Gaviota 3, cost 160 US dollars, and they weigh 11.3 ounces for men's size nine on my scales. With the Arahi 5, they cost 130 US dollars, and they came in at 9.1 ounces, again, for men's size nine on my scales. So now let's talk about the uppers on each of these. With the, with the amount of space that you have up in the toe box in order to display your toes for each of them, you know, they're pretty darned equivalent. I didn't notice much difference in the amount of space that I had in order, again, to be able to display my toes. And one of the ways that we can kind of check that is, you know, if you pull out the insoles uh, and you kind of match those up so that you can see how those insoles are cut to fit the volume of the shoe, this, the black, is the Arahi 5. And then the blue is the Gaviota 3. Now you can see that these are identical. I can't tell them apart, honestly, other than by color. And if you put them over and just overlay them with one another, you can see that there's really no difference in the cut of the insoles of the shoes. The only thing that I will note though, in terms of differences, and you know, like I said, with the shape of them, they're pretty much identical. But with the Gaviota 3, it is a bit more cushioned for the insole than it is in the Arahi. Talking about the midfoot section of the shoe and the fit there, you know, I was able to get a lockdown feeling on both of them. They go about it slightly differently because they just have different eyelet chains. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute, but you are able to get a nice snug feeling across the midfoot on each of them. So it really does allow you to get locked in to that heel cup area so you don't feel like you're sliding around at all. You know, and that's really important for me. I notice that mainly when I'm either going up or down hills, especially going downhill where you feel like your foot, if it's not locked in and secure across that midfoot, you feel like you want to slide forward sometimes and that can be annoying. But I didn't have that issue with either one of these. So I think Hoka did a really good job with the uppers on these. The one thing I will note though, if you're used to the Gaviota 2, the Gaviota 3 is a much more narrow shoe than what you've been accustomed to in the Gaviota 2. But in terms of the Arahi, very similar in terms of the fit. Now let's look at the upper material that they've used. And with the Arahi 5, I felt like there's just a little bit more airflow going on there. You know, there's a few more perforations up in the toe box. And this shoe overall, it just feels much lighter, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of the weight of the shoe. But the upper just feels a little bit more airy 
breathable. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot going on in terms of plastic overlays. They do have some. They've got their, you know, their Hoka logo back here. Um, they do have some plastic overlay in the heel counter, and that's just to give it some stability. I'm going to just go ahead and give it the pinch test since they've got it up on my shoulder right now. And you can see that I really can't pinch that material together at all in the Arahi. And if I try to push forward, again, there's a lot of stability built into that heel. Now let's take a look at the Gaviota 3. Very similar in terms of the uh, fit, as I mentioned, but the material itself that they make the upper out of, quite a bit different. I feel like this it has a more plasticky feel to it, and I didn't feel like it was nearly as breathable or as light as it is in the Arahi 5. You know, it's a bit beefier. I guess this shoe is much more of a luxury shoe. And that you can see that both in the upper material as well as in the padding and things of that nature. Uh, but as we look around on the side of the shoe, you know, they don't have a ton of plastic overlays necessarily, but this material just feels thicker and it doesn't seem to allow quite as much airflow when you're running. And as long as I've got it up here on my shoulder, uh, we'll give it the pinch test to see how that heel counter is doing. I get lots of material back in, in that heel counter, lots of structure to help keep your heel locked in secure so that you can correct some of that over pronation that you may have. If I push forward on it, get lots of, lots of material there as well. So each of them do a terrific job in creating a nice heel pocket for you to set in. And with that lockdown feel across the, fore, or across the midfoot of the shoe, you're not going to have to worry about your heel slipping around. I didn't anyway. I didn't have any issues with my heel slipping either side to side or up and down in either one of these shoes. So let's look at the cage system in each of them. Now, I am able to get a nice secure lockdown feeling on both shoes, but they go about just a little bit differently. You know, with the uh, Arahi 5, it's a very traditional eyelet chain. You know, they do have some plastic overlays there just to give it a little extra durability around the eyelets. And they also have some material on the inside cage as well. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's a pretty traditional lacing system. I didn't have any issues with that at all. With the Hoka, um, Gaviota 3. It's a little bit different. Uh, you know, they have kind of a winged system here, uh, but the wings kind of set in between the outer upper material and the inside tongue material because it is a fully gusseted tongue. And those wings, they kind of go down to the midfoot section of the shoe. So you get more of a banded feeling across your midfoot. Now they did something similar to that in the Gaviota 2, only these wings, these blue wings that we have here, those were really situated on the outside of the upper. Here they moved them on the inside between the upper material and the gusseted tongue. With the Arahi 5, it's got a semi-gusseted tongue. It's got plenty of padding to keep you comfortable. I didn't have any issues with that. And because it is semi-gusseted, it didn't migrate around. I didn't have any issues with that at all. And I didn't feel like the laces were digging in at any time across my midfoot, so I'm very comfortable. When I'm looking at the Gaviota 3 now, this has a lot more padding built into it just everywhere and the tongue is no exception. It's got a fully gusseted tongue, so you've got more of a booty uh, feel to it. And if we look at the tongue itself, look at all that padding. And it is just plush with padding across that tongue. So obviously it's very comfortable across my midfoot. Didn't have any issues at all. Didn't feel those wings or the laces digging into the cross the top of my foot. And because it's a fully gusseted tongue, it didn't migrate around at all, anything along those lines. So very comfortable. So long as I got the Gaviota 3 up here, let's take a look at the padding around the heel collar and the tab, and you can see that they've got tons of it. <laughs> it is just packed all the way around. It's got a nice place for your Achilles to sit there. It's, um, I found it to be really comfortable. It is a traditional heel counter there, and it does have a pull tab to help you get your shoes on. With the Arahi 5, they too have plenty of padding, just not as much. I found it to be very comfortable and more than adequate when I was out running. Uh, it sets its pillow style, so it sits up uh, along the top of the heel uh, collar as well as on the tab, and they got an Achilles heel flare for you. Uh, it's anatomically correct, so that feels good on my Achilles, but not as much padding, but you don't need it. It felt great, and this it acts as a double so you can help get your shoes on using that Achilles heel flare. So let's turn now and we'll take a look at the midsoles on each of these shoes. Now with the Gaviota 3, they have a lot more foam underfoot. They have 
34 millimeters stack height in the heel and a 29 millimeters in the forefoot for a five millimeter offset from the heel to the toe. While the Arahi 5 has a 29 millimeter stack height in the heel and a 24 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. Again, for that five millimeter offset from the heel to the toe. Now Hoka uses the same technology in each of these in order to create stability for you. So here's how they do it. They have a more softer EVA foam that runs on the lateral side of the shoe and a more dense rubberized EVA foam that runs on the medial side. And it's in the shape of a J. So if I flip over, this is the Gaviota 3, we can see that the darker colored foam. Now that is the more dense rubberized EVA foam and you can see where it runs on the medial side of the shoe down around until about the mid section of the lateral side of your shoe. So that is the J that creates the stability. So as you roll through your gait cycle from your heel to your toe off, you're going to find that that more dense EVA foam is going to slow that ankle roll and bring you back into a healthy level of pronation. And they do that with each shoe. So that's the same technology across the board for both of them. It's just with the Gaviota 3, there's just more of it. <laughs> there's a lot more going on in the heel. I feel like it's trying to correct my overpronation more than it does with the Arahi 5. Now in terms of cushioning and ride, with the Gaviota 3, it's considered to be a balanced shoe. I do feel like there is a lot of cushion there. It's not Bondi 7 cushion, but there is a lot of it underfoot. So I do feel like it's really soft. As long as you're landing on that softer EVA foam, the more that you land on that dense foam, the more rough ride it's going to feel like. And I found that to be the case with both of these shoes. So with the Gaviota 3, it's got a late stage meta rocker. So that means that the curvature of that foam is a little bit more flat. They don't really start arching or sculpting that foam until it gets up more past your metatarsal head. So there's not as much of a rocker there. And, but look at that soft EVA foam. You know, it really starts here and it runs all the way up along here. So as long as you're landing somewhere in that mid to forefoot of the shoe, it feels pretty soft and cushioned. The more that you land in the heel on a darker, harder, more dense EVA foam, the less cushioned it's gonna feel. But between the two, if you are a heel striker, I did find the Gaviota 3s to be a little bit more comfortable. With the Arahi 5s, now they have an early stage meta rocker. So that's more along the lines of what you might feel like if you were in the Rencon or maybe the Mach 4 or another shoe that has an early stage meta rocker. Simply means that they started curving or sculpting that EVA foam a little bit earlier, much closer to the uh, metatarsal head. And again, just like with the Gaviota 3, as long as you're landing on that softer EVA foam, these feel pretty cushioned. They feel pretty comfortable, but they're considered to be responsive. So not in that high cushion category, but I did find them to be comfortable to run in. The more I hit back on my heel, the less comfortable they became, however. So, you know, that's, that's the nature of a stability shoe. In order to be able to correct your overpronation, they have to have more stout EVA foam there in, again, to bring you into that healthy level so you're not rolling inwards. The downside to that is it's not a plush feeling when you land back on your heels on either shoe. Again, the Gaviota 3 felt a little more comfortable than the Arahi 5s did when I landed on my heel, but both were, were comfy and soft as long as I was landing on the midfoot to forefoot of the shoe. So let's flip these over and we'll take a look at the outsole. See how they're protecting all of that EVA foam that's underfoot. Starting with the Rahi 5, we can see that they have blown rubber in all of the high abrasion areas, including around in the heel and then there up in the forefoot. Now, I wouldn't say that it's overly done. It's probably just about the right amount. And now with the Gaviota 3 here, pretty much the same type of pattern. They've got uh, blown rubber in around the heel as well as up in the forefoot, again, in those high abrasion areas. It adds a little bit of uh, durability to your shoes, but also a little bit of traction as well. Between the two, if you are in need of maximum stability, then I think the Gaviota 3, and you don't mind a little extra weight, or if you're a heel striker and you need maximum stability, then the Gaviota 3 is definitely a good choice for you. If you are in need of just moderate uh, motion control, then I think the Arahi 5 is going to be the better choice. It's lighter. I'd like the early stage meta rocker, so it feels more natural through my foot strike, especially if you're a mid to four foot striker. I think that there's plenty of cushion to keep you comfortable when you're out running. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for making it to the end. I enjoyed making this for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.